Hello, good people, and welcome to Finance Skills Up. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. Our goal in this short video is to create a dynamic loan repayment or amortization schedule. We've done this before, but the difference this time around is we are going to use one of the new functions in Excel sequence to make the tenor or the period responsive and dynamic. So whatever period or months you put in there, the calculation will adjust based on the number of periods. As we always do, join me in Excel and let's go through this together. So this is the layout for our amortization schedule. We have the loan set at 32% per annum, principal is 25,000. This is going to be paid over 24 months. And the first thing we are supposed to do is to calculate the equal monthly payment. So to do that, we are going to use the PMT function. So the PMT requires the rate, which is set at annual rates but we need to divide this by 12 so that it agrees with the monthly compounding we have here now i'll put in my number of periods which is the n pair my number of periods is 24 months the pv is the principal amount which is 25,000. then these optional arguments future value which we don't have here so we put in zero and the loan is going to be paid at the end of the period so we choose zero for end of period option as with all financial calculations, this is an outflow. So we are going to negate this so that our monthly is now 1423.69. Now what we need is a period marker. So because we are going to pay this over 24 months, we need to spill 24 rows or numbers here. And we are going to use the sequence function. So what the sequence does is that it gives out a sequence of numbers simply. So equal to sequence and you provide the number of rows you need, which is tied to the number of months in the tenor. So when I do equal to sequence, it spills out 24 months. And this is the trick. So when we have a shorter period, this would adjust and give us 10. Okay. So let me just zoom out a bit so that you can see the effect. So when I go back to 24, okay, it now goes all the way to 24. So now that we have this, we will start our calculations. So our opening balance is going to be equal to 25,000. Our monthly payment has been calculated already. So I'm going to reference this and I will lock this absolutely using F4. And for our interest, we are going to use the IPMT function. So what the IPMT function requires is similar to the PMT. So IPMT requires the rates, the rates which are going to divide by 12. And I'll have to lock this F4. Now the period is going to be this. But because this is a dynamic array, I'm going to put a hash against this so that it references the entire range. So that is what you get when you use dynamic arrays. Now the number of periods is 24 months. So I'm going to reference this F4 and then the PV is 25,000 another f4 to lock this then zero for fv future value and then zero for end of period payment then i'll close this again this is an outflow so i'm going to negate this i'm going to use the same formula to calculate the principal part so i'm going to copy this so this gives me 666 for the first period and it spills down because of this dynamic array so when i come here and i paste and i change ipmt to ppmt I now have the calculation of the principal. So this plus this will give me the monthly payment. My closing balance is going to be my opening balance minus the principal for the first period. Now when we come to the second period, the calculation is going to be this is equal to that. But because we want this to be dynamic, we want to introduce an if formula that says that if this month marker or period marker okay, is equal to blank, that is it doesn't show anything then return blank okay otherwise return the original calculation so this will ensure that anytime we have nothing here we show nothing but if you have more than that period then of course this calculates so it is this portion that we are going to use for the rest of the calculation so when I come here I'll introduce this and then I'll pick my monthly PMT okay and then this calculates 
and then finally my closing balance which is going to be equal to my opening balance minus my principal introducing the if formula so that at least we get a blank if it doesn't show anything so i'll highlight these two copy it as far as i want and then highlight this and also copy this as far as i want so now if i change this to let's say 10 it adjusts and if i come here and let's say i make it five okay it also adjusts so the sequence function comes in to make this amortization very dynamic you can apply it in different scenarios please practice and add it to your list of excel tricks for more of these short videos you can send add to this whatsapp number we'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly on your phones all our old videos are on our youtube channel finest skills app please visit and subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles thank you so much for watching